Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from William Lowell Putnam Mathematical Competition, year 2000, problem A4. We wish to solve the following improper integral from 0 to infinity, sine of t, sine of t squared dt, that this integral converges. As you can see, we are doing this in a different style, one of a kind, hope that you will enjoy it. So here are my hints. First. Notice that function which maps t to sine of t sine of t squared is integrable on any compact subinterval of 0 plus infinity. Use the identity 2 sine of alpha sine of beta equals cosine of alpha minus beta minus cosine of alpha plus beta. And after doing that, you should be able to justify that our integral converges if integral from 0 to infinity of cosine of t squared plus t dt, if this integral converges. Then, crucial and the least obvious part, integrate the following integral, 2 sine of t squared plus t dt over 2t plus 1 squared, integrated once by parts to find the connection of this integral with cosine of t squared plus t dt. Uh, and that should be enough. So I'll give this problem a try and I will see you in just a minute. Right, so you know what, let's start with application of our trigonometric identity. Uh, sine of t, sine of t squared, 2 times that. Well, it can be rewritten in the following way. It can be rewritten as cosine of t squared minus t minus cosine of t squared plus t. Well, why is that, you may ask? Here is treat t squared as alpha, treat t as beta, then we have alpha minus beta, alpha plus beta. All right. And this means that our integral can be rewritten. We can write now that integral from 0, and let's go just to b, from 0 to b of 2 sine of t sine of t squared dt, it can be rewritten as integral from 0 to b of cosine of t squared minus t dt minus the integral from 0 to b of cosine of t squared plus t dt. All right. These two integrals are almost the same, and I will make them to be the same, almost, <laughs> by following substitution. Let's take this integral, and let's put u to be equal uh, t minus 1. Because notice that then uh, u squared equals t squared uh, minus minus 2 times t plus 1. And now, if we add these two things together, we get u squared plus u equals t squared minus t. So our t squared minus t can be replaced by u squared plus u. Moreover, du is just dt. And what about the bounds of integration? Well, since t was from 0 to b, and u is t minus 1, u goes from minus 1 to b minus 1. All right. So our first integral can be rewritten in the following way. We just have integral from minus 1 to b minus 1 of cosine. And I should put cosine of uh, u squared plus u, but the name of a variable doesn't really matter. I will put back in t squared plus t dt, right? Minus the integral from 0 to b of cosine of t squared plus t dt. Perfect. And now notice that these two integrals are the same. There is no problem on the interval minus 1, 0. The converges, notice that if these two integrals converge as b goes to infinity, 
then our original integral converges as well. So maybe let's write it. Notice that notice that if the limit as b goes to plus infinity of integral from 0 to b cosine t squared plus t dt. If this exists, as in n is finite, then our integral from 0 to plus infinity of sine of t sine of t squared dt this integral converges. All right, so now let's just investigate the nature of this limit. And to do that, the least obvious step of the whole reasoning, we need to consider the following integral. Now let's make, let's make it indefinite for a moment. Two times integral of sine of t squared plus t over 2t plus 1 squared dt. I will integrate it once by parts. So let's put u, u of t, the function which will be inter differentiated, let's put it to be sine of t squared plus t, then u prime it's after applying chain rule, it's 2t two two plus 1 cosine of t squared plus t. And function which will be integrated, v prime of t, v prime of t will be 2 over 2t two plus 1 squared. Because after uh, integration, it has a simple antiderivative, it's minus 1 over. 2t plus 1, is it turns out. So our indefinite integral can be rewritten in the following way. It can be rewritten as we multiply this times that. So we get minus sine of t squared plus t over uh, 2t plus 1. And we subtract this times that, but we have minus right here, so we can put plus. Plus integral. And now notice the nice thing, 2t plus 1 is in the numerator and in the denominator. It disappears. Perfect. So this is the integral which we wish to evaluate, and there is some other integral. And now notice what happens when I take, so I can rewrite this equation that our integral of cosine of t squared plus t dt, it can be written as sine of t squared plus t uh, over 2t plus 1 and we have plus two times the integral. Maybe let's put a limit from zero to b, from zero to b. And this is also evaluated from zero to b, plus two times integral sine of t squared plus t over two t plus one squared dt. Now, I will show that both this limit and this integral exists as b goes to infinity. The first part is easy, because notice that the first part limit as uh, b goes to infinity of sine of b squared plus b over 2b plus 1, well, this is obviously zero, because the numerator, the numerator is bounded and the denominator goes to infinity. So the whole fraction goes to zero. No problem there. And notice that we can estimate the second integral. Namely, notice that the integral of zero from zero to b, I can put the absolute value right here. Uh, 
well, I'm integrating a continuous non-negative function. So it's either infinity or a finite number. It exists. And notice that we have the following inequality. Well, sine is bounded by one. And you know what, maybe let's put, yes, let's put two also right here and right here. So we have two T plus one squared and this is actually uh, minus 1 over 2t plus 1 evaluated from 0 to b evaluated from 0 to b and uh, this is of course a finite number it is actually uh, just 1 it's actually just 1 because if i'm plugging t to be 0 i get 1 and as b goes to infinity, uh, well, you know what, b equals plus infinity. If b equals infinity, then 2t plus 1 is 0. So, which means that our integral, this integral right here, converges. Let's write it. This implies that integral from 0 to infinity of cosine of t squared plus t dt converges. And since this integral converges, our original integral converges as well. And this closes our proof. QED, quite easily done. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've learned something new this time. As I said, this is one of a kind video because some time ago, ago one of my viewers suggested that I should make a video with me writing on a piece of paper. Uh, also, if you wonder, I'm using just a standard nib. It's not a fountain pen. pen. I'm uh, I'm dipping my nib in a ink and I'm writing. It's a very nice. It's a very nice activity. Calligraphy is a very nice thing. I'm not a master of it, but I think I my scripture is legible <laughs> for you. So thank you very much for watching. And I will see you I will see you next time. Goodbye.